Hi guys, welcome back to another review and this time we're checking out the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G, one device that has been highly requested. In this video, we'll be checking out the design, camera and the specs and also answering the question of whether is it better than the Galaxy A73 5G in 2023. Don't forget to like and share the video as it helps the channel out. This is gonna be a wild ride. Strap in and let's get into it. And here it is, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. Starting off with the design, you have a solidly built mid-spec smartphone with volume rocker and power buttons all on one side. At the bottom, you have your first stereo speaker and the SIM slash SD card tray. At the top, you have a mic and the second stereo output, which is your in-ear speaker. With a glossy plastic frame and a matte plastic bag holding the phone in hand, it feels premium and I couldn't tell that it's made out of plastic, which just shows how far these mid-spec smartphones have come. The Galaxy A53 also has a 4 camera setup. The camera setup consists of a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with f2.2 aperture, a 64 megapixel main sensor with f1.8 aperture and optical image stabilization, a 5 megapixel depth camera with f2.4 aperture, and a 5 megapixel macro camera also with f2.4 aperture. It also comes with a 5000 mAh battery for those long days. In the front, you get a 32 megapixel selfie camera. The phone also comes in four colors, awesome peach, awesome white, awesome black, and the one I'm reviewing, awesome blue. And an impressive 6.5 inch Super AMOLED 120Hz refresh rate display with 800 nits of peak brightness, a 85.4% screen to body ratio, 1080 by 2400 pixels, a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, which culminates to 405 pixels per inch, which is a solid full HD plus display. It comes with Corning Gorilla Glass 5, a color depth of 16 million colors. You get your dark mode toggle and your brightness toggle, which has a peak brightness of 800 nits. Because the display is not the dynamic AMOLED screen, you do not get the adaptive refresh rate, which is a bummer. But you still get the 120 Hz refresh rate or 60 Hz for battery saving. But as you know, we are the 120 Hz refresh rate gang. It also has a screen mode where you can choose between natural and vivid or go a step further and adjust each aspect for your liking for the advanced display users. This screen is great for content consumption as you can see here in this YouTube video. In full screen mode, the cutout selfie does cut into the content but it's not intrusive, which is great. And for scrolling purposes, I hope you can see how smooth a 120Hz refresh rate truly is. Jumping into the camera, there are a lot of modes to test, but looking into the more section, you get your pro and pro video modes, panoramic and other modes. We'll first take a look at the ultra wide shot, which is quite crisp and takes in a lot of the environment with the 12 megapixel f2.2 aperture camera. You also get your normal 64 megapixel f1.8 aperture shot, which is clear and shows great details in not just the smartphone in the shot, but also the writing on the specs plaque. Now we test out the zoom shots, starting with the normal shot, which is clear and with sharp colors. Next is the two times zoom shot, which is still crisp and capturing the colors very well. Then we get the four times zoom, which as you can see might be a bit blurry, but to its defense, the image on the screen was moving. Lastly, you get your 10x zoom, which you see is zoomed all the way in it might not be the best picture, but it's a great option to have. Now we're going to test out the portrait picture. The first picture you see here is at 3 times zoom and it looks fantastic, with great edge detection and bokeh or blur effect. The next image is the portrait image at 1 times zoom, which also looks great and has amazing bokeh as you can see. Shout out to the 5 megapixel depth camera for these portrait photos. As you can see here, it plays a big role in the details and object separation on these pictures. Moving on to the selfie camera. We start with the normal selfie photo, which despite my bland look, is still a great photo. And I chose the natural setting so my face is not over processed. Next is the normal ultra wide selfie picture. 
which as you can see here, the picture captures me and a bit more of the background, showing a distinction between both photo modes. We now move into the portrait selfies and starting with the normal portrait photo, which is crisp, with great edge detection and the image processing is also amazing. No overexposure of my face. The ultra wide portrait selfie is also great. The edge detection is magnificent. You can clearly see that I'm brought forward and I'm the center of the photo. This is amazing because the processing stays the same as the normal portrait selfie. Our next matrix in the camera is the selfie video at 4K 30fps. Check it out here. This is the video quality for the front facing camera at UHD or 4K 30fps. It's quite solid. We'll hear the sound quality check when we do the review. Next is the rear main camera video at 4K 30fps. Let's check it out. And this is the video quality of the rear camera at UHD 30fps or 4K 30fps. As you can see, it's quite crisp and stable. Looking at the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G, this is a great mid-spec smartphone with 5G capabilities, Exynos 1280 5nm chip, 6GB of RAM, 128GB of storage, an octa-core CPU with 2 high performance cores and 6 efficiency cores to give you great battery life, a Mali G68 GPU which is good for basic gaming. Comes with the IP67 water and dust resistance rating, stereo speakers for better media sound quality, optical fingerprint scanner, USB-C 2.0, 4 years of OS updates and 5 years of security updates. The Samsung Galaxy A53 5G is a great mid-spec smartphone. It may fall behind the A73 in some aspects such as chipset, main camera sensor with the A73 at 108 megapixel and smaller screen. Apart from these aspects, the Galaxy A53 5G is an amazing offering from Samsung and it definitely holds its own against its big brother, the A73 5G, and thus it gets a 6.7 handy score. So when it comes to these smartphones, it's a matter of preference, but both are great options to pick and will serve the general user greatly for everyday tasks and media consumption. As always, I want to shout out the team at the Samsung Experience Store Clearwater for allowing me to film in store. If you made it this far, please like the video. And to see my review of the Samsung Galaxy A73 5G, check out the top video. To see the king of flip phones, check out my review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4. Also subscribe to the channel as I have the Galaxy S23 Ultra review coming up. And you don't want to miss that. Until the next video, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, our time is up.